Wide World on Money FM 89.3. All right, we are going to talk about discount travel, airline travel on Scoot, Fly Scoot. I'm very happy to have the Fly Scoot CEO, Leslie Tung, on with us today. Leslie, welcome to the show. So glad to have you with us. You're not flying, you're sitting still. Hi, good morning, guys. Hi, good, good to see you online. <laughs> and thanks for having me. Yes, I'm not flying, I'm actually in the office. <laughs> well, if you were flying, you're sitting very still. I mean, and there's no turbulence or anything, and it doesn't look yeah. like a plane I've ever seen before. But exactly, uh, Leslie, great to have you with us. Uh, tell us, look, big start to the year. We know the last half of last year was massive with uh, with lots of folks getting back on um, uh, to the airports and and in the air. Uh, how's it going so far in 2023 for Scoot? What what are you looking? Uh, what are the trends you're seeing? I think if I can recap, the last quarter back in 2022 was actually sure. a very fantastic quarter for us. As you rightly mentioned, there are a lot of people who are flying now, which explain why uh, most of our flights are full. Mm. I think going into 2023, we are still seeing the strong momentum on the regional travel, especially within Southeast Asia. I think what is what has also changed compared to the end of last year was actually the reopening of the China's border. I think that right. gave us another uh, boost in terms of how we can continue to uh, add capacity back into the system. Yeah, most definitely. Um, it, it looks like, uh, you know, everyone is getting out. I just noticed that you made an announcement that you are, uh, is, it, is it a dozen or more cities in China that you're going to resume your flights to on Scoot? I mean, it was a huge, a huge press release that I saw that had come out uh, last week, I believe. Uh, that, yeah, that's that's right. big, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Pre-COVID, we used to fly to 19 destinations within China with a weekly frequency of slightly over 100. So yeah. what we are doing now progressively is to add back these destinations back into our network. So, so far mm. up to June, we will be flying about 50 to 60 percent in terms of flight frequency, but to mm. about 12 destinations within China. Fantastic. Leslie, how has the demands or interests of Singaporean travelers changed since the pandemics are they are they taking more adventures are they flying further afield what have you noticed in the flying trends from mm. singapore i think what we realized is that because of the pandemic because of the inability to fly in the past two and a half years a lot of people now are flying more frequently they are making mm. more frequent trips within southeast asia whether to go to uh, the old destinations to get the uh, experience that they used to have pre-COVID or actually try out new places that uh, Scoot offer within the Southeast Asia network to actually create new experiences for themselves. Fantastic. And 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 I think that that makes a lot of sense. Flying very far distances, of course, people are still doing that and need to do that. But the regional holidays, the regional trips for business, but more or less for pleasure too, are are growing in popularity. I know, you know, I've been looking at a trip for our family to go to Siem Reap in Cambodia, um, you know, less than two hours away or so. And, and those those short haul trips, I think that's where Scoot, even though you're doing long haul as well, uh, you know, quite well, but those, those short haul trips really are, for me, it seems like that's a real opportunity to get people back out into the flying world. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right, Glenn. Uh, we do offer short haul, medium haul, and long haul. Uh, for the long haul, we do fly to Europe. Uh, medium haul is the North Asia, whether it's Japan, Korea, Taiwan. But I think what we are seeing is that, uh, as what I mentioned just now, a lot of people are actually flying very frequent within Southeast Asia. And that is where we see more opportunities. And that is why we have also announced that we are leasing nine new uh, Embraer E2 to join us in, in the coming years. Fantastic. And what what is what is special about those Embraer aircraft? I, I saw the news release you had sent out on that. It looks like kind of a an A nineteen size, A three twenty size. Is that is that fair? Or what what's the how's that fit into the plan? Okay, a actually, it is in terms of seat capacity, it is smaller than the Airbus three twenty that we have. The mm -hmm. Airbus three twenty that we have actually can sit between one hundred eighty to one hundred eighty six passengers. Yeah. This E2, uh, we have configured the aircraft to seat 112, which is mm. much lower than 186 seaters that we have. But what yeah. this actually does is actually it underscores our confidence in the air travel demand within Asia. I think that is where we felt that there are new opportunities that we can deploy the right aircraft type to many new destinations within the region. And in turn, then we'll be able to offer our passengers more travel options 
and also reinforce the network connectivity in Singapore. Mm. So are those planes for new destinations that have, for example, smaller airports, or will they be used, uh, the Embraer air, aircraft be used on, on uh, already existing routes? They, they will be used on both new as well as existing. Mm. Leslie, so you have the yes. new flights, you certainly have the demand, but when we spoke to, I think, Scoop previously, but certainly other airlines, there was an issue with manpower because people forgot that during the pandemic, you've got to rehire people, you've got to train people. Where is Scoot with that now? Have you filled all your slots? Are you still hiring? Or are you all ready to go? Uh, right now, we are about 82 to 83% of pre-COVID capacity. I think no. if you look at the whole Asia Pacific, uh, most of the airlines are at about 50% or so. I think the reason why Scoot is able to recover and scale up so quickly is because during COVID, we actually kept our core team of Yep. operational staff as well as ground staff. But having said that, we also had recruited close to 1,000 new colleagues who have joined us in the past 12 months. And wow. we are still continuing recruiting for pilots, cabin crew, as well as ground staff in the coming months. That is huge. That is huge. Yeah. 1,000. Yeah. That's, uh, that's really quite an opportunity. And, and it was my understanding from the last discussion um, that we had on this topic that it takes, what, a couple of months yeah. or two or three months to get people back in the, back in the aircraft in terms of staff, right, for the training and certifications? For, for new colleagues who have joined Scoot, yes, it takes about two months or so to train the cabin crew. But for pilots, it will be slightly longer because of the uh, type training as well as the simulator training. I think for ground staff, it's a matter of getting them, uh, some came with experience. Those without experience is really training them and get them up to speed as soon as they can. Well, you mentioned 82, 83 percent there, which is already extraordinary. I mean, have you set yourself a target for the full capacity? It was in the news again yesterday that Changi Airport expects to reach pre-pandemic levels by 2024. Has Scoot set any targets like that to get back to 100 percent? Uh, yes, we are now at 82, 83 uh, percent. To go back to 100 percent is something that we definitely were planned for this calendar year. And actually, we are planning for beyond 100 percent which is why we continue to recruit new colleagues to join us. Yeah. Leslie, um, Scoot fits into the, you know, fits into the world in, in its own way as a discount regional and, like you say, short, medium, long-haul carrier. When you look at the customer experience on Scoot, do you have any plans to, uh, to continue to change that, alter that in any way, based maybe on uh, customer feedback from the last few years or uh, any any changes in, in what that experience on board will look like? Yes, I, I think one, one of the key strengths for Scoot is actually we do offer differentiated product and services. I think, for example, the Scoot in Silent, the Scoot Plus, and actually empower passengers to choose what you want to purchase on, the, on, on us. I think we have also done a couple of surveys in the past months, definitely looking into how we can further improve, how we can further innovate to provide more product and services. So when we're ready to announce, we'll definitely make the announcement. Yeah. And on that point, uh, Leslie, you are ahead of the field. You mentioned there many rivals are at 50% thereabouts. How are you going to stay ahead of the field? What are your long-term plans? It's going to become a very, very competitive aviation industry, if not by the end of this year, certainly by 2024. What is Scoot going to do to keep staying ahead of the pack? I, I think over the past 10 years, because Scoot now we are about 11 years old, I think we have shown that we are relevant to the market. We are able to grow our fleet. We are able to expand our network. Our model actually works for the market segments that we are targeting. I think, as I mentioned, I think we continue to invest in the future. For example, getting new aircraft joining us, the Embryo. And it's not just the Embryo. It's actually the Boeing 787 Dreamliners, the A320, 321, which will continue to join us because we still have about 20 new aircraft that will join us in, in the next few years. And that gives us a really good opportunity to continue to expand our network and to offer more destinations for our customers. Uh, it's, a, it's a busy world right now and going to get busier for you and other carriers. Uh, Leslie Fung, thank you so much for being with us, uh, CEO of Scoot. Appreciate you your much, time guys. today and your, and your insights. Thanks for being on Money FM. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Have a good weekend. Fly safe. You, you too. Bye.